what is the significance of India taking um, uh, the presidency on in this uh, period where, of course, we've just come out of uh, the pandemic. This will be hopefully the first full year uh, after the pandemic where we will, uh, where somebody will be uh, a presidency, the, both the, uh, the, the uh, Saudi and the Italian presidencies of uh, 2020 and 21 were, of course, impacted by uh, the pandemic and even much of the Indonesian presidency was impacted by pandemic. So we will be hopefully the first year which will be fully on. Uh, we also take uh, on the presidency at a time when um, uh, there is a war on in Eastern Europe. There are issues with energy. Um, so, uh, give us a sense of why this is an important thing, uh, uh, both for G20 and for, of course, India. Uh, thank you, Sanjeev, for having me on this uh, show. I'm truly delighted to interact with you. Uh, G20 is firstly important because it accounts for about 85% of the global GDP. It also accounts for about 78% of the global trade and two-third of the complete population of the world. But I think more important than that is that it's the only body which comprises of both the developed world, that is the G7, and of emerging markets. So United Nations is too large a body, it's too unwieldy a body. Uh, the G7 is too elitist a body. And G20, because it comprises both developed and developing world, is the right body to take all the major global decisions in the world today. So the post-2008 financial crisis, G20 rose to the situation. On the issue of the debt, uh, much later, uh, the DSSSI, that the Debt Servicing Sustainability Initiative, came from G20 and many other initiatives have come from G20. Now, G20 in India will be held at a point of time when you will, by the time India takes over the growth, there will be a looming crisis of global slowdown of growth. In many parts of the world, there would be recession. There's a breakdown of global supply chains. We've seen the post-COVID pandemic impact across populations in the world. We've seen uh, action on climate uh, scenario uh, on a vast range of issues. And you've also had a situation where uh, geopolitics uh, is at its worst. You know, countries are not speaking to each other. And therefore, this is a major crisis in the world. There are a huge range of issues which are confronting uh, the world today. Now, every crisis is also an opportunity. Mm -hmm. And to my mind, uh, India gets this opportunity to be action-oriented. Sure to, be leadership. to be ambitious Absolutely. and as the Prime Minister has rightly said that India must set the agenda. This is what is important. That so far we have been giving our comments to agendas being set by the developed world. This is for the first time that India gets the opportunity of setting the agenda for the world and getting other countries to react to that and being in a leadership position and to be able to really build consensus around many such issues. And therefore, this is a rare opportunity for India. The Prime Minister wants the G20 to be held in all parts of the country, all states and all union territories, so that citizens of India are involved in this great huge process of G20. Also, that this is an opportunity so that the Sherpa track, which has 13 working groups, finance track, which has eight working tracks, and there are many, many engagement groups. There are about 11 engagement groups. And during our presidency, we'll have two separate working groups, one working group relating to the disaster risk resilience, and an engagement group, which is the startup group, which is a new initiative by India. And therefore, converging and integrating the Sherpa track, the finance track, the engagement groups, all to work towards the common objectives and the common priorities being set out by India for the bringing growth, dynamism, lifting people above poverty line, and ensuring that there is climate action. <laughs>